Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, back with how to map uh, part 5 uh, of Greece. In this part, we're going to be discussing destroyers. Uh, so this is also going to be a rather good subject uh, to discuss, as I like the class uh, a lot um, and how it interacts, uh, particularly with this map, uh, as well as the cruisers. Um, so after this part five, uh, part six will be illustrating the different uh, like video clips of destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and perhaps even carriers doing these types of things that I've been talking about. And then we'll be starting a new map, um, which I haven't decided what new map to start yet. But regardless, destroyers. So uh, as we normally do, uh, first we're going to be talking about positioning. Now as I was looking at um, some of the... Uh, recent uh, ranked battles. Uh, I realize this gray circle is a little bit farther over. It's actually something more like... <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't draw. I seriously, I can't. <laughs> uh, but the circle, it kind of like touches here, comes up through here. It's something more like that. So just keep that in mind as well, but these principles are still going to apply regardless. Anywho, um... So when we're talking about destroyers um, and positioning here, um, one of the first things that I will look at when I am a destroyer and I'm looking at, okay, which which side did I spawn on? Uh, which flank did I spawn on? Um, and then what is my destroyer's capabilities and what is my teammate's destroyer's capabilities? For example, if you have two destroyers on each team. So say something, I'm like the Shimakaze and I spawn here. And then my teammate is in something like the Friesland of the Smallland, and he spawns here. Because again, where this is a map for tier eight to tier 10 ships. Um, it will actually be, what I'll suggest in chat, um, is that I and the Shimakaze go to this flank, and he and the Friesland go to this flank. And I say this because a Friesland has the hydroacoustic search, and I think it's five kilometers uh, distance, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and when he goes to this cap, you know, even if I was in a Friesland, I would suggest, hey, let me go to this cap. You should because I go to this uh, cap. Uh, because of this hydroacoustic search, he's going to be able to spot or uh, detect uh, an enemy destroyer who comes down um, to also uh, contest this cap. I'll see if it's something like this. Um, and that's important to be able to spot because when, for example, like when your cruiser um, comes up here, you've, you've got a battleship working more out this flank, um, keeping that destroyer lit, uh, there's opportunities to be able to uh, lob shells over the island um, and be able to punish um, an enemy destroyer for pushing into the cap and keeping him undetected. A destroyer who's undetected for a long time is a destroyer player who tends to be uncomfortable with that and then uh, perhaps, hey, he's, he's had enough, um, and then he just actually just leaves the cap because he's tired of being detected. Um, especially if you're putting more pressure on, if, you know, if there's a cruiser here with radar on that as well. Uh, so something to take note of, because the Shimakaze, uh, like my, if, for example, if I was Shimakaze, I can go over here, and I can, uh, because my detection radius, um, concealment is so good at tier 10, um, I can push, you know, further in, you know, kind of maybe along this line at the beginning. I usually try to do more of a flanking motion um, to go out to the uh, the right. Um, but I try to stay screening. So when my, you know, I say I have a cruiser go here, I have a cruiser go here. My other battleship guy, he's he's following in behind me. A lot of lines happening now. Um, but I can screen any torpedoes uh, that the enemy team uh, might be uh, destroyer uh, might be f uh, firing down. Uh, these torpedo lanes. So when I'm here, my goal is to try to uh, de first detect the enemy destroyer, but it's also screening and providing spotting uh, for my allies um, from behind. So let's get rid of some of these lines because that's kind of a lot. Um, you know, for example, I was a Shimakaze uh, on this side of the map. And after I took this cap, um, I kind of I came down a little further, and then the enemy team had a Holland. Um, and this Holland, let's erase this line. Uh, the Holland had done kind of what I was talking about, and when I'm a destroyer, I like to try to push more in this way. Um, but because my concealment was so good, 
um, in Shimakaze. This is something I love to do is I screen destroyer. So I detected him and then I kind of, I did this motion because he was pushing because he, he knew he was detected and he was trying to find me. But basically I was kind of wanting parallel uh, to him up at an angle and he couldn't detect me and I was keeping him lit the whole time, um, which eventually caused him to decide to turn off and engage. And it took my team longer than I would have wanted to be able to dish out damage on him. And it was actually, um, he got back to like somewhere around here before the enemy team uh, or my team uh, took him out. Uh, but that's like the, the advantages that you have on a flank like this when you're in something like the Shimakaze, uh, because you can just uh, shadow an enemy destroyer and just uh, stay out of their range um, and help light them up so that your team, uh, your cruisers, and battleships uh, can be able to put you know the effective fire on him um, that they need to uh, to punish him uh, you know for trying to pursue a destroyer who's just uh, out chasing uh, out maneuvering him but keeping him lit um, I don't always find myself in these circumstances all the time but it's something that you can utilize well here on this map because once you know a destroyer and you know, they cap they take their cap the next thing the next logical decision that they're gonna want to do um, is that they're going to want to push down and then they might kind of hang around for a minute um, but they're going to want to push further in and it's usually uh, somewhere in this area uh, when you're in this area that you, you spot each other sometimes or uh, maybe even a little further back uh, but it seems to be the clash zone and then um, destroyers will disengage uh, from one another um so yeah, so that, that, that's positioning. Now let me talk about something else um, when it comes to destroyers and um, immediately contesting these caps uh, or going for the caps. Um, something that I'll pay attention to is, you know, what does the enemy team have? So if there is, you know, for example, there's a Holland um, who's coming up to this cap. I know that his torpedoes reload rather quickly and they're really fast on top of that. So if I'm a destroyer player, and I'm coming into this cap, and I know that there's going to be, uh, if I say there's my CV, or uh, I just know that there's a destroyer on the, uh, the Holland is potential. It's one of two chances that the Holland's on my flank. Um, then I'll try to position myself in destroyer. Like, I'm, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to just stop right here, right? Because if I do that, as the enemy Holland, for example, comes across, he's just going to be spouting torpedoes off um, right down um, this direction. Um, so that is not a good position for me to stop at. Uh, I shouldn't stop there. Um, so what I might do, for example, is I might just like come to here and stop. But more times what I'll do is I'll actually um, come over more over here uh, on the back side of the cap versus just sitting in the center of the cap. And um, because I know in Shimokaze, I can get to at least here uh, before any torpedoes uh, would be coming this way versus like oh, i'll stop here and then when i decide to go across i get you know blasted with really fast torpedoes and die for my team um so it's uh, selectively like choosing where you're gonna go in the cap um so like you know this is kind of like two examples um for the other flank um usually when you're going, you want to just go immediately up to one of the islands. Um, the one thing um, that is nice, um, when I was talking about how this uh, cap actually in the current ranked, it kind of comes more, it's more over, you know, here-ish as an example, really bad circle. But if I'm in a cruiser, this is what I'll do to you as a destroyer player, because I know you're going to be running to contest this cap. I will move up to this island, I'll actually space myself out a little bit far and I'll be waiting as my destroyer is teammate is capping and then all of a sudden cap, as soon as I see it comes contested and the cap progress stalls, I'll immediately pop my radar and in a Baltimore, I can get two shots off on you before you get into cover behind the island. Um, so that's something I really like to utilize. So as a destroyer player, um, you have to be mindful of that. So, um, yeah, you really want to push in behind the island. Now, another option that you could do is that you could actually just uh, break off and sit here right at the back of the cap. Um, but the problem is when you do this and there's a radar on the enemy team, lights you up, 
Um, most destroyer players will just take off. They want to get outside the radar range. Um, so you want to do that or go down here. But if you know there's no radars, uh, cruisers, uh, you can do that. Because what I like about... I think I used a different color there. But what I like about sitting in the back here uh, of these caps, uh, and it's the same for uh, this side as well. So let me just kind of draw a line illustrating that. But what I like, if I'm destroyer player over here, um, again, you come to here and maybe it's you go to this, you go to there, or you kind of hold off in this like back position. When there's no cruisers, radar cruisers, um, that are pushing up to these points, as I've talked about in the last video, um, when you're sitting here and an enemy destroyer pushes in and he's like, hey, there's no radar cruisers in the team matchup and there's a destroyer capping, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, yellow in, you know, through here or come around. And because you, as a destroyer player, positioned yourself in the back of the cap, you're immediately able to engage them. Because usually most destroyer players expect, um, like, you know, for this example, moving up like this, most destroyer players will expect to find you behind the two rocks. Because that, that's the norm. But when you don't have any radar cruisers, you know, and it's, you feel more comfortable sitting in the back of the cap, when that, um, uh, enemy destroyer pushes through, you are already sitting here, maybe even somewhat of a kiting position, and you know, you're know you already in the best position uh, for that because you can just kind of kite away. Maybe you smoke up or he smokes up, or maybe he, oh, he, he, you're not there, so he just immediately stops in this uh, area here, and then you as a destroyer with your torpedoes, uh, you just flood that channel and kill him. Um, I've done that several times to destroyer players and just sitting here in the back when I know there's not a radar cruiser um, And I'll just punish them uh, for coming out at the same time if you do push up to these two uh, Rocks here um, and this type of motion happens You need to be in a kiting position um, as a destroyer um, Because when you're sitting like you know, you know get turned around and you're kind of facing out Or something like that or you know, maybe it's even you know facing this way so that when a destroyer player uh, pushes around uh, to engage you you can already kite and get away because if you're sitting nose in on this island and an enemy destroyer pushes around or what are you going to do reverse and dodge all the torpedoes like that's going to be really hard for you to do you know you get to use the speed and maneuverability of the rudder shift to your advantage at the ability to dodge in torpedoes because i just see destroyer players who they rush they yell around the edge of the island they won't shoot for guns even though you're detected and they're just dumping their torpedoes, getting them away. So when you already have planned your next step of being able to um, kite and push away, then you know um, you're already at a better advantage than the enemy destroyer who's pushing in. Because um, usually when you're in that defensive position, you already have the advantage over the enemy player. And that's like why this cap is so good if you are a, uh, a radar destroyer, <laughs> like, you know, the black, the small end, or we have really high, good hydroacoustic range, like the Friesland, um, Z-52, uh, just as some examples. You know, this cap really works for you uh, well, uh, because you can hang that over. Because I've even seen I've even seen players uh, like, you know, a Z-52 um, sitting here, and then image destroyer decides to push around, but he's hydroacoustic search detected. Like, he knows you're coming, and that gives him that much more advantage. So this cap, because it's such a highly contested cap, destroyers that um, have the advantage of uh, you know, having a, a good hydroacoustic search, having a uh, radar, um, having good DPM, this cap tends to work really well because, you know, Shimikaze, like what you reload every five, six seconds, um, but you can cut away well because both of your rear guns, uh, both, you know, two of your three turrets are located in the rear of the ship. So that ends up working somewhat well, but you're not going to have the DPM to outcompete something like gearing pushing in on you as an example. Um, so those type of destroyers um, that are better suited for that knife fight close quarters, you know, maybe something like with the kid, you know, I can use your uh, repair party. You have the smoke, um, you know, that's really where this uh, cap more shines uh, for those types of destroyer players. And then to also draw the you know, positioning of where I might stop as a destroyer player here. Yeah, kind of, kind of that same motion you see going on. 
and I'll erase that. Because even when you are a destroyer player, and you, particularly this cap, you already need to have planned your next step. You know, what if the enemy destroyer pushes me while well, I'm contesting the cap? Or what if a radar or a cruiser lights up his radar? What am I gonna do? So you've already kind of walked through, uh, you kind of like maybe even a visualization process of what you're gonna do as a destroyer player to be able to counter that. Um, and then often, most things can be solved if you're close to this island, but you just need to be in a more kiting way position in case the enemy destroyer does push you um, coming around uh, the corners of the island. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this really is position number one, I would say, uh, for destroyers when it comes to this map. Um, I often, sometimes, it depends, sometimes I can see three destroyers per team on this map, uh, or even four. And in the case of there being four destroyers, um, you know, it's just kind of, uh, just, oh, I'm gonna race. I'll just kind of, I'll draw little circles here. If there's four destroyers, or you know, maybe there's an extra destroyer over here. Uh, usually, what I'll do is I'll help cap. I'll come to this edge and cap, and then I'll go ahead and immediately move more into a uh, flanking position. So I'll maybe help cap, and then you work around here, or you just bypass the cap um, because you don't want the enemy to know that you're there and maybe you push more further around as an example because maybe you've got speed boost going. Um, so because when, as an example, if there's you know, four destroyers here too, um, you know, naturally they'll, they'll tend to come into the cap as well um, and then they'll, perhaps they'll try to take the flanking maneuver as well. Um, not that that always happens and I'll talk about an example of that. Um, but it's good when there's uh, other destroyers as well um, to be able to take more of this flank. So then you kind of let your center destroyer, you kind of let them have this area of affluence um, while competing, while you go to the outer edge. Because when you are a destroyer and you're coming out here screening the edge, uh, one, you know, you're providing that screening in case there's a destroyer that's dumping torpedoes um, who comes farther out here and then drops torpedoes, let's say, I don't know, it could be even be here. Um, and they're trying to hit that cruiser, as an example, uh, behind these rocks. Um, you've already pushed up and you've engaged and you're preventing him from doing so uh, because it gives a different torpedo angle when you have an enemy destroyer. And, and it's the same vice versa uh, on this cap when they come out to these outer edge. The one thing that annoys me the most, um, I was in, I think I was in the gearing, and I, there's two, there's three of us destroyers, and so I was like, you know, let's just work this BC. I'll push uh, push in with him. And I had a, what's this, a small end on my team with me. And so after I moved up and we took the cap, um, I kept, oh, I've got the wrong color. Uh, I kept pushing up further into the cap, or because I was this destroyer who spawned on the inside. Um, so I was kind of coming up more in this area, and even though he spawned over here, but he just shadowed me. So he, he stuck with me. Wherever I turned, he turned with me. And because both of us were here, that gives the enemy team a higher probability of de deleting us, because what happened was is there's two small ones on this flank um, who pushed in, and because he didn't go further out, because we were both side by side, and they just pushed in and they killed him because he was closest because both of them, well, one had moved like this way. And then the other one, because they picked us up on the radar immediately, moved in to engage uh, with our small end player on my team, um, who kind of like circled out and of course got killed because he made that maneuver. Um, and then I just disengaged back into the cap and then uh, re-engaged uh, later on. So two destroyers working side by side, um, I don't like personally. I'd rather have the spacing. So if I'm in the position where my destroyer, you know, the one here, he just moves in this way, I'll just swap with him. I'll just go to the outer edge. 
um, because I want to be able to ha have more of that affluence. Now, these can also serve as secondary positions. So for if there's only two destroyers, as an example, I'll just delete that. Um, so if you are a, you know, say first position is, you know, it's kind of like, you know, going along lines, contesting the cap, um, you know, and then we talked about, you know, that second position is getting closer. So the second position is really, you know, for this area, it's as a destroyer player, it's you know, kind of here, um, you know, for the enemy team, it's this area because your lines are going to cross, you're going to spot each other. Uh, while this flank tends to be a bit different. This, you tend to just kind of be hanging here if there is a destroyer contesting the cap with you. You kind of hang here until there's a deadlock breaks. Usually what ends up breaking you out of this first position uh, with his cap is that the enemy destroyer makes a mistake. They get impatient, they push around, or they're like, hey, I don't want to deal with a radar cruiser, and then they just uh, they get out of the cap and they let you take it uncontested. Um, or the enemy destroyer, if there's only two, um, they both push together on this flank. Um, and that's something, if you are able to take this cap scot-free in the beginning and there's no enemy destroyer pushing in, then that should kind of be a red flag. Um, and then like, okay, then where's the enemy destroyer? Because a, a battleship or cruiser pushing up is going to get detected by your team as they're sitting, you know, here and back here. But if an, the second enemy destroyer doesn't get detected, he's not contesting the cap, that should be a red flag for the destroyer who's over here because then if i am pushing up like in gearing and my z52 has taken the cap scot free and there's no sign of the enemy destroyer then i'll immediately go into the assumption that both enemy destroyers are on this flank and then i'll play this flank a little bit more cautiously i'll just kind of you know go back and forth until maybe that other destroyer eventually gets spotted maybe he's just he decided to go further over here or something like that um or that they both spawn here and because i was i had that in mind i know not to push in and i can better engage with two destroyers on this flank um because you know as so this is really the second position uh, for destroyers on this flank the third position is if you're able to uh push through uh this flank and then really that, that third positioning kind of becomes more of this area um, as their flank folds. And the same could be said uh, of this area too. Because what I've had is, you know, sometimes there'll be destroyers and wolf packs um, who'll, who'll push one flank together. And so like that happened in one match, I was on this side uh, of the map. And we took this cap, but three of the four enemy destroyers are pushing this flank. And so I came over here in my Colsack, and when uh, I had another teammate destroyer, he, he died somewhere over here, but it was, I think it was against a, uh, was it a Yugamo and a, I don't know, the other one was a gunboat destroyer and I was in Colsack. Um, but I pushed in and I can engaged both of them and I took them out both barely. I only had like 300 HP left. Um, because I knew, you know, as they push up, this tends to be that uh, next area they tend to push in. So that's really the, the third positioning if the flank folds. And this is just, you never know. Like, I was in a map for, I think it was like 13 minutes of the battle, and no one had died yet. Like, it was just a deadlock. And sometimes it just takes that long for the next decision, uh, or for this flank to be decided of what's happening. Um, and that's why it's good to have a radar cruiser player here. Uh, if there is one to be able to um, continue to pressure the enemy destroyer um, in that cap. Uh, because then, usually what happens, because, you know, more of the team is uh, contesting more here than, you know, not so much here in uh, these two areas, is that you'll notice the, like, if this flank, uh, this part of the team collapses, uh, then usually your allies will push through um, really quickly. Um, and that will put pressure you know, on the enemy team over here. Uh, so on and so forth, it's vice versa for whatever flank I'm talking about, or for the, the you know, same for the enemy team and as it is for your team, for example, if you spawned on this side. Um, so let's talk about how 
the destroyers interact uh, with the other uh, classes. Um, I guess first starting off with carriers. Um, usually carrier players on this map, um, their main, or their, it should be their main priority, is that they should be able to fly over um, and provide spotting. So let's, let's use a different green color. Uh, where they want to spot you as a destroyer. So let's say, you know, it's something like uh, this. Kind of having these uh, intersecting paths here. Um, because the CV is going to want to detect you. And so usually what they'll do is they fly this uh, path. Um, try to catch a destroyer who's on, you know, for example, on his way to uh, a cap, or um, because they'll know that you, you know, it's really easy for if there's only one destroyer to just push into this cap. Um, uh, you know, they're going to try to contest. So usually you see rocket planes first. Um, so you have to be conscious as a destroyer player. Um, I always, when I'm dealing with Situations like this, if I'm something like the gearing and then there's enemy CV uh, on you know, enemy team, then I'll shut my AA off um, while I'm contesting the cap. I'll try to work not to engage, but if he flies right towards me um, and he's within you know, 2.6 or whatever the detectability range is by air for gearing, then I'll light him up. But because he's already at 2.6, his reaction time is so slow, he usually has to fly over me and circle back around to engage with me. Um, so that's something you ha just have to be mindful of, um, because if there is an enemy, uh, if there are carriers in this map, and you are something like, uh, you 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 know, Smallland or a Swedish destroyer, you like you don't have smoke. This cap becomes a lot more dangerous for you because the enemy uh, carrier can just keep lighting you up um, and dealing damage to you, um, spotting you for his teammates. So um, that's when this. This map particular, you know, with CVs, like, you know, it's harder for a destroyer for you to flank, get around. But that's usually what you need to be aware of um, as you push in. You know, and then if you get the chance later on the map um, to kill the CV as a destroyer player, I mean, you can go for it, but not if it's completely removing you from the flank and not helping your uh, team. Um, so let's erase those lines. Um, when it comes to battleships, um, you just have to be mindful of what, what is the enemy battleship players doing. Um, because usually what they'll do, oh, a different color, um, they'll kind of come more back to this area as an example. Depending on their class. Oh, different green. Can just circle a little bit. Um, you just have to be conscious because if there's no, if you're a, a destroyer player and you're pushing up uh, into the cap and you're the only thing spotted detected, uh, you can pretty much guarantee that you know uh, a cruiser, a battleship is going to be uh, firing shells at you uh, because you're the only thing detected and they're just going to want to uh, take advantage of you pushing in. So you kind of have to be mindful that these battleships can be in these positions. Um, if you're really maneuverable and you're not that close, battleships will not always tend to uh, take the shot on you, um, but they'll wait for something else. But it's just something you have to be mindful of. What is the battleships doing? Because if I'm in this cap and all of a sudden, you know, there's a palmer, you know, pushing into the cap and I'm sitting back here, like that's, that's not necessarily good for me as a destroyer player. Or if there's a battleship, like, you know, something like the Georgia, who's pushing this flank, you know, and he's got the broadside of you, why Friesland has you had your acoustic searched. Um, that's just something you have to be mindful. But you should be able to, your team should be able to spot a battleship uh, doing that type of maneuver. So it's just something you have to be careful of. Um, especially, you know, if a battleship, if there's a couple of battleships pushing all together um, on a certain flank, you know, say it's a FDG, it's a Palmer, and it's... Something that's got good capabilities of dealing with the destroyer. That's just something you have to be mindful of. Um, and then, you know, as a destroyer player, you're most likely going to have to go into more of a kiting position, just staying outside that detectability range and using your torpedoes. Uh, when it comes to radar cruisers on this, or cruisers, radar cruisers in this map, 
Um, you know, we've talked about how, uh, let's go with a different color, yellow. Um, these four islands tend to be very hot spots for cruisers who want to push up uh, with radar to provide radar coverage um, over the caps. And so you just have to be mindful as a shorter player. You know, like I was saying, like, you know, if I'm in a cruiser and I push up, you know, something like this cap and I'm waiting for this cap to become contested, you know, kind of remember the current rank season of 0.10.2, it comes a little bit more over. As soon as I see the caps being contested, you know, I light my radar and I get, uh, in Baltimore, I can get two shots off on you uh, in the space of, you know, 10 seconds. Um, but, you know, something like the Neptune, the Minotaur, the Wooster, they're going to be able to get multiple hits in on you as you move into the cap. Um, so that's just something you have to be mindful of, as well as, you know, some cruisers will push more, they'll kind of, they'll hold kind of more this further position as an example. Um, so then you have to be mindful of the cruiser positioning to see how does that affect you. Uh, because sometimes cruisers, like the battleships, but particularly the cruisers, because their concealment is better uh, than battleships, um, is that they'll push in kind of utilizing these islands maybe to get sneaky on a cruiser um, holding in. Um, you know, something, you know, like the Venezia, they, can, they have that creeping smoke screen that moves along with them. You know, a Venezia player can easily move up. Um, undetected, but you kind of see that moving smoke screen if you're uh, looking, paying attention. Um, you just have to be mindful of what is the enemy team doing uh, when it comes to you as a destroyer uh, player on this map. And so kind of, I think maybe you've noticed, to sum it up, uh, the map awareness, You, as a destroyer player, you have to have both situational awareness and you have to have map awareness um, to do really well on the map Greece. Um, because, you know, you're putting yourself in, you know, pretty high risk area as a destroyer player pushing into the A cap here. Um, but you have to have that situational map awareness of what is the enemy team doing that can affect what you're doing on your flank or the opposite flank and, you know, um, being able to contribute to the most to bring a victory um, along. So that's just something you have to be mindful of. Um, with this map, um, because the shore players who struggle with the map awareness of, you know, and when I say map awareness, I'm talking about, you know, looking at your mini map that's, you know, here, like you should be paying attention to that um, throughout the battle. Um, it's really going to help you as a shore player to effectively make decisions. Now, let's say one of the things I do want to say when it comes to the map awareness, situational awareness, I had this happen to me last night. Um, that was really annoying where I was in a Baltimore and I had pushed up to this island and all three of my battleships decided to go this flank and one destroyer one cruiser went over here and I had you know one destroyer came over here but there was a no, no destroyers came to this cap so that was a red flag moment right um, but there was an enemy Musashi um, who had come down like to here and then he turned away and then what our uh, kid uh, did on our team is that once he capped, he just chased the Musashi. I mean, the Musashi player like went all the way to like over here before he died. And, and you know, also what happened? Our all three of our battleships were chasing the Musashi, while the rest of the enemy team just capped, capped, killed our two guys over here, swung around, took this cap. And I can't stop a battleship push in a Baltimore here, right? So I was, you know, moving along. So if you're a destroyer player, don't get caught up in chasing the enemy battleship cruiser that's just running away. Because when you do that, you are removing yourself from screening and contributing. Because a kid or a destroyer player who goes uh, chasing, you know, all the way in the back here, and there's only, and your other destroyer player is dead. One, now that there's two enemy destroyers on the loose that um, that the battleships and cruisers have no screening for, um, and they're just freely contesting the caps because you're busy chasing um, the battleship. So don't don't go chasing and remove yourself out of the battle. I mean, the, the, you can deal with the Musashi later, right? But your main goal as a destroyer player uh, for this map, let me actually erase. Erasing these lines. 
your main area of concern as a destroyer player, ideally what you should be playing within on this map, is that you should be playing, you know, something like in this bubble. Um, when a destroyer player removes, when you remove yourself outside of this kind of area of affluence, I mean, not that you need to be riding all the way back here, you know, it could probably be more like a little more cut in, depending on what's happening, uh, if the enemy team's pushing or your team's pushing. But when you as a destroyer player remove yourself from this kind of inner bubble, I'll phrase it as, and you are, you know, chasing a ship all the way in the back, it takes you that much longer. It takes you like a minute and a half, two minutes, just to be able to re-engage yourself in the battle. Um, so you have to have that map situation awareness of what's happening with my team. If your team's completely demolishing the enemy team, doing a fantastic job, then yeah, it's okay for you to be outside this uh, bubble of influence, as I'll call it. Um, but ideally, as a shorter player, you need to be playing more in this area because this means you're providing screening for your battleships and cruisers. Um, spotting for your enemy sh uh, or your battleships and cruisers, um, and you're able to be most effective uh, as a destroyer player in this uh, circle versus being outside, um, out in the boonies, you know, on the A or J line. So just keep that in mind. I think that's really all I want to talk about for destroyers uh, when it comes to this map, Greece. Um, you kind of know when we gave the overview. Uh, of the map, you know, when I was in the free camera and I was moving around uh, the, the map, you know, I was showing you these low points in the islands, um, you know, how you can effectively use them, how you can fire them, o fire over them, you know, if you're gunboat destroyer, if you're stealthy, how you can uh, move up utilizing the islands. Um, so just uh, don't be afraid to take advantage of the islands in this map um, because you have so many as a destroyer player in the center. An area of influence that you can do a lot of effective damage um, or just provide spotting in general uh, to help your battleships that are and cruisers that are hanging out more back here to be able to put effective fire in on an enemy team. So if you like today's uh, video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down subscribe if you want to see more if you haven't subscribed thanks so much I really appreciate it uh, and we'll look to forward to part six which I think will be less than 20 minutes, I really hope. Uh, well, I'll just be showing you clips and snippets of the different ship classes in action. Um, know that I'm really not a carrier player. You can look at my run rate in randoms and know that I'm not a good carrier player. I don't really like dealing with carriers, but I'll be illustrating, maybe pointing some things out of what my teammates and carriers are doing um, uh, on a map, but I'll do my best to give you examples of, you know, showing you in a battleship, a cruiser, a destroyer, uh, interacting on this map and utilizing what I've been telling you uh, for carriers, battleships, cruisers, destroyers on the map, Greece. So, until next time, take care.